Hello, Pisces. Hello. This is Adrian. I go Capricorn Tigress with Astrology A Look Inside. And happy October, happy Halloween season to you, Pisces. And I want to tell you something. I'm kind of giggling to myself because I noticed that the only times I get dislikes or not likes on any of my videos, it's from Pisces. I don't know why you guys don't like me, but I figured I, I handle that today. But Because I, I figure what's happening is that by the time I get to doing <laughs> Pisces, I'm exhausted. I'm already exhausted now, and it's 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm, and I'm still not done. And so I think what happens is if I get... If I do all 12 in a marathon, like I usually do, you know, usually my voice is probably down and my, you know, my, my, my level, my energy chi is down and, and all of that. So I figured I would come and I would make your video now instead of Leo. <laughs> so I'm doing you guys fairly early. So you should get a little bit of my, of me. Now, I don't know how much of, of, if it's just me. Because, you know, I, I read somewhere recently that for some reason Pisces and Capricorns um, just seem to have that real weird thing. And I will admit, I know several Pisces that have that real weird thing with me. And so, you know, I'm going to actually talk about that a little bit, especially with you Pisces and Capricorns this month. Um, because... Uh, Capricorn falls in your solar 11th house and that's friends and groups and uh, associations and and organizations and and like your associates and your acquaintances and that's your solar uh, 11th house well you know the funny thing now that Saturn is there that's kind of heavy and Pluto is there and you know that just shows that there amongst your friends there's some power out there amongst them uh it could be that you know you have some very powerful friends on things like twitter and facebook and instagram and snapchat and stuff like that but it can also mean that you work maybe in this area because this is the area of power and saturn's there it's the 11th house. And I could see someone with something like that working in something like charity organizations or a nonprofit or something like that because the 11th house is always causes and things that, you know, um, mean a great deal to that person as far as like hopes and dreams and causes and just things that are very important to that person, but also their friends and their associates. But that's where Pluto is this month, okay? So anyway, let's start out. The, um, let me do your actual read. I'll start with the fact that, you know, not just this month, but for a while, Pisces has had Neptune in the solar first house. I mean, Neptune is sitting right smack dab almost in the middle of Pisces. I think it's, yeah, it's retrograded to 13 degrees or so of Pisces um, for October. And also... In the month of October, uh, Chiron is retrograding into Pisces. It's going in at 29 degrees and 28 degrees during the month of October. So anyone that's born in the late degrees of Pisces might feel that Chiron influence on them. And Chiron, of course, can be a little daunting because it, you know, it's it's a wound. It's it's an open wound. It, wherever it is, it's a wound. It it hurts. It hurts wherever it is, and and it, 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 you get to heal. That's the good thing about it, because wherever Chiron goes, it heals the place. But it always opens up the wound, <laughs> heals it from the deep. You know, goes into the inner core, digs out the abscess and all that kind of stuff. It's ugly. It can be ugly. And this is falling in your first house right now. This can be a little weird because you know Neptune is naturally the ruler of you know Pisces some people always think that it's still you know it's Jupiter but I always just say it's Neptune and I, I really believe Neptune is indeed the ruler of Pisces I mean as far as you know just that whole imagery of Neptune really embodies Pisces every Pisces I've ever met it really does embody them 
And so um, that is something that's going to be really big for you this month. The fact that Neptune is sitting basically in your personality. So, I mean, you can come off a little nebulous, a little otherworldly. You might even come off a little drunk or a little high. And I don't know if you really are drunk or high, but you can give off that image, even if that's not so. And that's important for you to realize this. Now, this is true for anyone who is a Pisces or someone who has a Pisces rising uh, like that, or maybe even a Pisces moon. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm i going to give you something really personal here. Um, not in every chart I make for myself. Like if I do Koch, I don't think it is. But if I don't... Um, I have this really big first house with Capricorn, Aquarius intercepted in between, like sandwiched in between Capricorn and Pisces. And so my chart is really weird because it pretty much embodies some of that of Pisces um, in it. And I can tell you, I've been feeling really otherworldly over the last couple of months. Now I do have Neptune, which is the ruler of Pisces, on my midheaven up at the top of my chart. But I mean, literally I've had to hold on to things um, along the last couple of months, like dizzy. Um, you know, that, that feeling like you're really kind of stoned, even when you know you haven't done anything. That is Neptune in the first house. That is Neptune in Pisces. And now that Chiron is coming, you know, toward because it's coming from the the end toward you know the, toward towards Pisces, and so you're going to be feeling that that that's going to really heal a lot of your personality issues. You you'll feel maybe even like you're being attacked sometimes, or like there's a wound that's being healed. So it it could be painful when Chiron goes through the solar first house. Okay, that that can be painful and um, with Neptune there it's you know I can see how you can experience pain um, with the personality and with yourself and so that's something to be aware of in this month because that is you know that's occurring um, there is Mars in the 12th house as well and Lilith is in your 12th house and, you know, Mars and Lilith are going to connect in the month of October in your 12th house in, in Aquarius. And so that's, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on in your 12th house, but, you know, that's your deep, hidden, secret self. And there's, you know, maybe you're just going to pull away. I mean, it, Mars there just shows that there's an urge to go into that 12th house and, and do whatever that 12th house is. Now, what scares me about this 12th house emphasis, though, is that Mars is sitting in there with Lilith. And Lilith, the Dark Avenger, <laughs> you know, she's plotting and planning. I mean, you know, that's also the house of hidden enemies. I, I can see you being the hidden enemy all plotting and planning someone's demise. Or, you know, at least something horrific for them. D don't do that. Um, but, you know, maybe not you hopefully not doing that and let's hope no one's thinking about doing that to you all right uh i had talked about capricorn and and, and pluto up in the 11th house that's power up in the 11th house powerful friends up in the 11th house um yeah so that's power um, but a lot of the emphasis for you this month is going to, it's actually all going to really start out in your solar eighth house. I mean, because everything starts out in, in, in Virgo, you know, it, it, um, well, in October, it starts out in, in Libra, uh, in the sun, uh, and, and Mercury, um, are, are in Libra. And, um, that's your solar eighth house. And, and that's where the emphasis is there. But the crazy thing is that during the month, uh, Venus is going to retrograde back uh, from Scorpio into Libra. So there's going to be more emphasis in that solar eighth house, um, which is, you know, resources and it could be deep secrets or hidden things or just feeling like you want to be alone and investigate and search and, 
and look up things and 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 that type of thing but you know with libra there it could also just mean a you know the sun and venus and mercury it could mean lots of sex so you know and and it could mean lots of sex with a secret partner since mars is in the 12th house but you know i don't know if that's actually what's happening but i'm just saying with neptune in the first you know, it's just not a good time to fool people, you know, as far as, like, secret affairs and stuff. <sighs> anyway, so, you know, the emphasis starts out in Libra, but then it all goes into Scorpio, because it's just, you know, after the 23rd, almost all of the emphasis is going to be in Scorpio. And that's really going to be up in the area of where you're, you know, like your philosophy and your mindset and your, maybe your in-laws if you have any and travel and um, things that have to do with like maybe even politics I've been talking a lot about that because the ninth house with the emphasis there is sometimes can roll things like law and legalities and politics and and religion and stuff like that so uh, you know just be aware that there is going to be some emphasis there that could um, really affect your travel and this is really kind of indicated too because down in the low in your chart all by itself actually is Uranus it's like one degree of Taurus um, in your solar third house so I would be really cautious of your travel um, over the course of um, October just it, it should be fairly positive though to be honest even though uranus is down in the third house that's going to affect more of your communications than your than your local travel because sometimes that can affect local travel but you're like big business and big travel and 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 international business and and, and dogma and politics and religion and uh, anything legal really i would I would say over the course of October, you can sign all kind of legal documents and um, finalize all kind of important paperwork. You know, if you need to get insurance, get insurance. All those big important documents can be handled in this month. It's it's that kind of month. Um, you know, it starts out in uh, Mercury starts out in in, in uh, Libra and it ends up in Sagittarius so it, Mercury is moving pretty fast and you'll be getting lots of information you got Jupiter sitting up in in the ninth house if you haven't traveled I really highly recommend you Pisces get out and travel this is this is travel time you should have a good good time traveling I could even see some people who have you know maybe even planned cruises or something up during this time because it's travel time so now what I want to do, because I'm basically, you know, this is your chart, and I've looked over your chart. This is basically what I, you know, my impression of what's going on with Pisces for the month of October. But I just realized, you know, there is that north node that's sitting in the sixth house. So there is going to be some emphasis for work. And I, I would say, you know, use all of the emphasis that you get this month for work. That's in Leo and in, in that's been there in that sixth house for a while you know it's going to be moving into your fifth house soon and then that's going to start affecting um, relationships and things like that so you know I would just take advantage of all of that right you know with your chart now as far as um, the astrological events the for October when the month starts out the moon's going to be in Gemini and and that's going to be in your uh, solar fourth house but the next day you know it goes on the 2nd of October it is going to be in um, in cancer and that cancer is going to be early degrees and that's going to square that Sun that's in Libra and the, the Libra is um, you know basically your your eighth house which I I mentioned a little earlier so the moon which is going to be down in your your fifth house is going to be squaring that eighth house and so I'm you know I wonder how that's going to play out for you uh, you know because that that could be like uh, you, your love interest and, and something to do with 
you know, maybe a sexual thingy going on. Or it just could have to do with, I would say, having a deep conversation even with your children. I don't know why that came to me. If you have children, you might have, a, have to have a deep talk with them maybe. Or if you're in a relationship or in a, in, in a you know, in, in a love situation, you might have to have that deep talk. Uh, when the sun squares because there's a little minor stress that day on the 3rd of October Mercury is going to square Pluto and when it does that that you know that just indicates some strong um, obsessive possessive uh, type of feelings that are going on with Pluto being up there in the 11th house and Mercury it's going to be over in the 8th house and so that square is going to be a little little weird on October 5th, uh, Venus retrogrades in Scorpio at 10 degrees uh, of Scorpio. And it just indicates that it could be some a love trouble for some people. For you, it's more in, um, in travel. So, uh, you know, I'm just thinking that when it retrogrades out of that ninth house, because it's going to go back towards the eighth house. And the eighth house can rule like your partner's resources. So it it is possible that you're dealing with someone who's having issues with, you know, paying your fair share of the of the way in the partnership and you will have to deal with that in some way. That could possibly happen. Um, on the 7th of October, uh, Saturn is in conjunct with the true, true node and that is between, um, that happens at three degrees of Capricorn, Saturn, uh, Saturn and Capricorn, and three degrees, 20 seconds of Leo in the North Node. And the North Node is in your solar uh, sixth house all by itself sitting in there like that. It's been there for a while. I don't know how, you know, you've manifested that North Node influence in your sixth house. I hope you've managed to take advantage of it, um, you know, because the sixth houses work in Capricorn is the natural ruler of um, of the career and so with this in conjunct like that I'm just wondering if it's going to be a boost somehow to your career at least to your friendships or your social status you know see possibly that happening for you um, during that time now October 8th there's going to be a new moon the new moon's going to be in Libra and that is all happening in your solar eighth house as well. Uh, again, a lot of emphasis is going to be in your eighth and ninth house this month. And when, um, you know, Libra, it, the moon is going to be new there, you get a chance to work on issues like your relationships. And especially, like I said, if there's a problem with resources from one partner to the other, I would say you'll get a chance to work on that during this time also find like a balance in the relationship because if one partner <clears throat> is, is doing all the work and paying all the way there could be a lack of balance in the relationship so this might be a take these two weeks to figure that out and clear that up and also work on you know if there's any issues when it comes to resources and finances and who pays what get that all worked out On the 9th of October, Mercury enters Scorpio, and um, it's going to be in Scorpio for about three weeks. And Scorpio is that solar ninth house, and so as I said, as the month goes on, the emphasis is going to go from that eighth house into that ninth house. And that really is a lot to do with that, like I said, travel and dogma and international, um, uh, you know, business and education and um even religion, going to church and spirituality and um, all of those types of issues and your philosophies and what you believe in. And um, that's where this emphasis is going to be, uh, especially with Mercury there. That means that you're going to be thinking that and talking about that. And you're going to have some pretty deep conversations because, you know, Scorpio is pretty deep. And so I could see you talking about some really heavy, deep, important uh, stuff, heavy stuff over the next few weeks. Um, if you're a speaker or something like that, I could see you really taking advantage of that. Um, also, I'm just noticing, you know, with Neptune sitting in your first house and now all this emphasis up in the ninth house, you could really have like this 
amazing spiritual experience like this spiritual I almost want to say replenishing like renewal just a recommitment to yourself I mean because to yourself right it's Neptune it's your first house it's in retrograde and um, that Neptune is like going to trine so much of what's going to happen in Scorpio over the month of October and so that's all positive it's all positive it's all trining it's all just goodness 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 and I it just a great opportunity to grow just growth that's what I see there for Pisces is growth um, you know that that trine is beautiful in fact so I could really see that being real nice for you guys over the course of the month it's, you know the funny thing is when you first look at Neptune and Pisces you think ah they're still on their high there's some religious freaks but then when you stop and you think about all that emphasis in the ninth house that's higher learning that's higher consciousness that's higher it's it's all so elevated and spiritual and I just I just wonder how many of you Pisces are going to just have such beautiful spiritual experiences this month uh, between that Neptune and that, you know, all that emphasis in Scorpio. I don't know what made me think about that. It just seems so pretty in a way that not a bad thing at all, but a very almost like intelligent and fact gathering type of spiritual moment. Anyway, on uh, October 10th, Mars is going to square Venus. Now, that is going to be something. Because that, whenever Mars squares Venus in any sign it's in, that can always cause relationship struggles. And so, in this case, Mars is going to be sitting in the 12th house, which I mentioned to you before. Mars is sitting in the 12th house with Lilith, of all places, and... Your Venus is, you know, Venus is retrograding back from Scorpio into Libra. And so, um, yeah, that, that Mars square Venus could definitely cause problems. Because that's going to be from the 12th house to the 9th house, I think. Yeah, definitely. And so I can see where that could be a little bit of an issue. Just be careful with travel. Don't drive when you're high. Don't drive when you're drunk. And... Uh, you know, make sure whoever is the designated driver is not high or drunk as well. You know, because remember, you've got Uranus sitting by itself down in the solar third house. And Mars is sitting up in the 12th house like that. So, just want to make sure you are aware of that. Uh, October 12th, Sun is in Libra, square Pluto in Capricorn. That Sun in Libra again, 8th house, Capricorn 11th house right deep conversations with friends deep conversations with associates you could be cursing somebody out i don't know maybe not <laughs> it could just be friends it's something deep conversation but that you know the thing is it's a square and because it's a square it usually indicates some type of power struggle now that could be a power struggle uh with friends or associates or you know hopefully it's not a boss or somebody um, you know, or someone in power that you really need on your side because you don't want to get into a power struggle with someone that you really need to have in your corner. On the 15th of October, Mercury in Scorpio is conjunct Venus in Scorpio, and that really indicates digging deep into that area. And that, again, is that ninth house. That's education. That is learning. Higher learning. There's something to do with higher learning or travel or, like, international learning or international travel or international business or, you know, anything like that. It could be you're really deeply into the political scheme, right, This like, at this time, because a lot of people are deeply into what's going on with politics right now and so you know there's going to be a lot of emphasis on politics just you know don't get so wrapped up in that because you, that could possibly happen now also I mean you know it is Venus and so 
Venus and Mercury are going to be in Scorpio, and even though it's um, the ninth house, it, it could indicate that there could be some love found in this area. And that's like, like I said, higher learning or while you're traveling or, you know, at school or um, at church or any of those places you could find love. And you can use your, you know, Scorpios are investigators, your natural investigative abilities during this time to find out how to find love. You know, I would do that. Uh, with uh, October 19th, Mercury is trying Neptune. Uh, Neptune to your first house, of course, and Mercury is, you know, in Scorpio. However, they, it, this aspect squares Mars, and that Mars is in that solar 12th house, and I've talked about that Mars. You know, it's so funny, even though it, it, it is a creative aspect, it, there, it, something can create a problem or some confusion, and it's because Neptune is in your first house, and Mars is in your 12th house, and so be aware that on the 19th, there could be some confusion, and someone might even, you know, get upset at you, and curse you out and all that and you'll be like what what you don't even know what's going on just be aware of it on the 23rd which is october the sun is in scorpio and the sun enters scorpio at uh, 4 23 a.m you know when the sun is in scorpio it just it highlights secrets a lot of secrecy and we've got a lot of emphasis in scorpio this month there's gonna be a lot of secrecy a lot of deep dark conversations a lot of things that have been hidden um, might come to the fore I mean just with all of that emphasis of Libra in the eighth and then it moves into Scorpio that's just so much eighth house in Scorpio emphasis this month I think you can hopefully work through some problems and get some healing and closure to things that might have just been pent up in there for a long time so i hope you do get to work through that because scorpio is trying pisces it's a positive time to work through issues when they're when the sun is trying your sun october 24th there's going to be a full moon in taurus so you know, be really careful uh, with that full moon. With you know, uh, opposing all that emphasis of in the ninth house, and the the, the solar third house is um, travel. It's it's local travel though, like you know, going shopping at the store, or picking up the kids at school, or maybe if your job was close, just taking the bus or something to work, or you know, short distance travel. It could also rule your neighbors and your neighborhood in general. So it could be indicate something around your neighborhood. Um, but it can also indicate like relatives, especially like um, extended relatives, like aunts and uncles and cousins and nieces and nephews and uh, brothers and sisters and stuff like that. So you could get um, like um, uh, visits or family members that stop in or something like that but just remember that there's this full moon moon in Taurus uh, is opposing all that Scorpio so you know it, it, it's going to be like this weird seesaw from this third house to this nine house with the moon down in in the, in the third house and then the Sun up in in that ninth house so you know, one is a small and, and one is thinking big, you know. So I'm just hoping, and, and usually the full moon in Taurus, it indicates like completions and change and it could, it, you know, you could just experience some change around your neighborhood or the way you do things as far as communicating that day. Be careful of your communication, so. Just be careful of your communications because the ninth house is publishing, but the third house is, you know, just your natural, you communicating with your, your mouth. And you could say something or when the moon is full in Taurus, so just be careful that day. On October 26th, there's this, uh, the sun 
in Scorpio is trying the moon in Cancer. And that Cancer moon is in your fifth house, your solar fifth house. And that moon, um, or that sun, in Scorpio is um, in your so solar ninth house. So it's from the ninth to the fifth house, and, and that is the fifth house sometimes can roll taking chances and also can roll entrepreneurship. I, I talk about that in one of my other videos. And with cancer there, cancer is known for publicity and um, advertising. You know, they're known for that. And um, I'm just wondering if that's going to be how it plays out because the ninth house is also known for publishing. And so I could see where publicity and uh, publishing and public affairs, that could be a real big, um, real big thing for you that day. Um, but, you know, Scorpio trying the moon in Cancer also can indicate that we, we end what we no longer need. We get rid of what we don't need anymore. And so you might find that, you know, that you, you might have to scrap one creative idea and come up with another one so that could be how it all plays out for you on the 30th of October uh, Mercury enters Sagittarius and that means that there's going to be big thoughts I mean that's your career sector Sagittarius and you know mercury up there means you're going to be thinking about your career and your reputation and your image and how you do um come across in your your society and how other people do see you and so um you know with mercury there i i'm i'm thinking that you especially in sagittarius i'm thinking you might come up with something really creative and uh, something unique that sets you apart that hopefully will help you with your career. So, you know, th th yeah, I could see that possibly happening. Yeah, definitely with the early, the North Node in Leo and in the uh, early degrees. And then when, uh, when, uh, Mercury goes into Sagittarius in the early degrees. That would be a trine from your sixth house of work to your um, tenth house with Mercury. That's actually very good for working career that day. So do keep your eye op open uh, on for October 30th. Now, of course, Sagittarius tends to do things a little sloppy because they, they get a little big and overzealous. So make sure you watch out for that because Leo and, and and Sag like to do things up big and you might do a real big splash at your job that you want to do a good job though. Make sure you do a good job. So on the 31st, uh, Venus leaves Scorpio because Venus is retrograding. It means Venus is going to leave your solar 9,000 go back into Venus in Libra uh, it's going to leave Venus in Scorpio and go back into Venus and Libra. And so it's going from your ninth house into your solar eighth house. And when it's in the eighth house, of course, well, that's more emphasis on sex, but it's also more emphasis on a deep conversations with your partner and just really, you know, hopefully connecting on a deep internal level with your partner because Venus and Libra is always better um, for love relationships and partnerships than Scorpio. You know, Venus and Scorpio is in its detriment and Venus and Libra is in its dignity. So it really, or you know, it's home. So it makes a big difference. Uh, Venus will be in Libra, uh, or at least in, it's going to, until I think the 6th, I believe it, if I'm not mistaken, either the 6th of November or 15th of November, I think. So, when the retrograde uh, end, ends uh, in Libra. And that'll be in November. And finally, October 31st, Venus is opposite or in opposition to Uranus. And that Uranus is down in that solar third house, which I've talked about. 
and Venus is up in that solar eighth house or you know because it's going from the ninth to the eighth you know because it's retrograding but it's going to oppose that Uranus so be aware of that you know that's communication and you know your partner and you know maybe a deep conversation so you don't want to get yelly and screamy and argumentative or anything anyway my dear sweet Pisces I'm really glad that I did your horoscope and I did it instead of doing Leo's <laughs> I hope I had enough energy for you guys and I hope you actually like what I've done this time I really want you guys to to hear what I have to say I, I, I for some reason I feel like there is some Pisces out there that really needs to hear what I have to say so I'm glad I said it Again, this was Adrian Igo, Capricorn Tigress of Astrology, A Look Inside. And please do come visit me at astrologyalookinside.com. Sign up for our updates and newsletter. I look forward to seeing you there. And I thank you so much for your time today. Much love, much light, and many blessings. All of you wonderful voices. Thank you.